All right, this lead code question is called find the town judge. It says in a town, there are N people labeled from one to N. There is a rumor that one of these people is secretly the town judge. If the town judge exists, then the town judge trusts nobody and everybody trusts the town judge. There is exactly one person that satisfies properties one and two. You are given trust, an array of pairs representing that the person labeled A trusts the person labeled B. If the town judge exists and can be identified, return the label of the town judge. Otherwise, return minus one. So for example, one, the judge would be person two, and that's because person one trusts person two, but person two does not trust person one. If they did, we would see another pair, which would be two, one. For example, two, the judge would be person three because person one trusts person three, person two trusts person three, but person three doesn't trust anybody. And we'll go over one more example. We have one, three, two, three, three, and one. And in this case, there is no judge because person one trusts person three, person two trusts person three, but then we have person three that trusts somebody also. Person three trusts person one. This does not satisfy our requirements of somebody who the entire town trusts, but does not trust anybody. All right, so we have a couple of requirements in this. Everybody trusts the judge, but the judge trusts nobody. Let's start with everybody trusting the judge, and let's pretend that this will be the judge. So if this person trusts the judge, that's one person trusting the judge, and if this person trusts the judge, now we have a trust count, let's say, of two. This person would have a trust count of zero, and so would this person. So we have three people, and everybody trusts the judge, except, of course, for the judge itself. The total number of people is three, and this person has a count of two, so this person would be the judge. But is it that simple? Our rule so far is that the person with a trust count of the total number of people minus one is the judge. But what if the person we've been calling the judge so far trusted this person? We would increment this person's trust count by one. But according to the one metric we have so far, which is that the judge is the person who has a trust count of the total number of people minus one, this person would still be the judge because you have three people and this person still has a trust count of two. That would obviously be wrong because we know that another rule that we have in this problem is that the judge cannot trust anybody. Our judge is obviously trusting someone. So our math isn't as simple as adding one to the trust count of anybody who's trusted by someone else. What we need to do instead is to think of this more as a zero sum game. So anytime someone trusts someone, the person who is trusting loses one in their trust count, and the person who was trusted gains one. That'll look like this. So let's say this person trusts this person. Their trust count would be decremented by one, and the trusted person's trust count would be incremented by one. So then when this person also trusts this person, their trust count would go down by one, and this person's trust count would go up by another one. As we can see, the trust count for our judge, once again, is the total number of people minus one. So now if we go back to the scenario that we had before, where this person actually ended up trusting this person, this trust count would go up by one, so it'll be at zero. And the person who we called the judge before, their trust count would go down by one, so their trust count would end up being one. So now who's the judge in this scenario? No one is. No one has a trust count of the total number of people minus one. And that's supported by our drawing in the diagrams because nobody meets the two requirements that they're trusted by everybody and that they trust no one. All right, so this is a more detailed representation of the example we've just done. Starting from the top, we still have the trust counts right above our character figures. And to the left is that person's number. So the person in red is person number one, the person in blue is person number two, and the person in green is person number three. Moving down a little bit, we have our trust pairs. So the first pair means that person one 
trusts person three. And the second pair means that person two trusts person three. But remember that we also need to keep track of our counts for each person. We'll do that with an array whose indices represent each person. So this would be person one, this would be person two, and this would be person three. We're using a trust count array with a length that's one more than our total number of people to make it easier to map each person to the proper index in the array. And by that I mean, let's say we're talking about person one, that would just map to index one. Person two would map to index two, and person three would map to index three. If instead we used a trust count array that was the same length as the number of people, we would have to do something like person one maps to index zero, person two maps to index one, and person three maps to index two. And to me, that's a lot messier than having an array where we can just map the actual person on a one-to-one -one basis to its index. Okay, so to finish this off, let's just go through the example that we have here. We'll start here. So again, this says that person one trusts person three, which would look like this. One trusts three, meaning we have to decrement person one's trust count by one and increment person three's trust count by one. How would that look in the trust count array? Well, we said it has a one-to-one -one mapping. So this would be person one has negative one and person three would have a positive one. Now we'd move to the next pair, which again says that person two trusts person three. That would look like this. Person two trusts person three, meaning we decrement person two by one and increment person three by one. In the trust count array, that would look like this. Person two would have minus one and person three would now have two. Okay, so all there's left to do now is to loop over the trust count array and see if there is any index that is one less than the total count of people. We have three people, so is there any index that has a count of two? So if we look at the trust count array, it would look like this. Is this equal to the total number of people minus one? No, it's not. So we move over one. How about this? No, it's not. How about this? No. And how about this? Yes. This is equal to the total number of people minus one. So that means that person three is the judge. All right, let's get to the code. So what lead code has given us is a function called find judge. It accepts a parameter n, which represents the total number of people in the town, and a parameter called trust, which represents the array of the pairs of who trusts who in the town. All right, so the first thing we have to do is create an array which keeps track of the trust counts. So we'll say let trust counts equals a new array with the size of n plus one, and we'll fill all of its indices with the initial count of zero. So in this case, that would look like this. All right, so we initialize our trust counts array with every index being zero. Let's stick with the example we've been using. So the trust pairs would look like this. All right, so now we have to loop over the trust pairs and update our trust counts. So that would be four, let ij, ij represents the array we're on. So since this is the first loop, it would represent the pair one, three. So let ij of trust, and we have to decrement the trust count of the person who is trusting and increment the trust count of the person who is trusted. So trust count i minus equals one. So decrement that one and trust count j plus equals one. So increment that. Like I said, in this first loop, i would be one. So we'll 
decrement that one and J would be the person who's trusted, which is three. So we increment that one. That was this array. So now we move over to the next array, do the same thing, decrement I, I in this case would be two. So this would be negative one and we increment J. J is again index three. So that would be updated to a trust count of two. So that would be this, this person trusts this person, and this person trusts this person, minus one, minus one, two. And now all there's left to do is to loop over the trust counts array and see if any of the trust counts is equal to the total number of people, which is n minus one. And remember this first index in the trust counts array doesn't really play any role in this, so we can start this next loop at one instead. So that'll be four, let i equals one. i is less than trust counts dot length, i plus plus. And I just noticed that I've been calling them trust count up here. They should be trust counts. So let's go back down. All right, so we're back to looping over the trust counts array and we're looking for the index, if there is any, that's equal to n minus one. So the total number of people minus one. So we'll say if trust counts i equals n minus one, then we'll return i because that means we found our judge. Let's quickly do this on the left. Is this the judge? No, no, and yes. So it's gonna return three. But there can be a case where there is no judge and as it said in the instructions, we'll just return negative one if that is the case. But of course it's not in the example that we're doing right now. All right, so let's just run the code, see how we did. Looks good, let's submit. All right, so our solution was faster than about 91% of other JavaScript submissions, and it uses less space than 100% of them. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below, and also down below are other good resources for learning algorithms. See you next time.